What is up everybody, this is Chris, and welcome to Lost in Comics, where we help you get lost on your comic journey. Welcome to the weekly top three comics to read video for the week of April 3rd, 2024. Now before we get started today, I just want to give a moment of silence, 10 seconds for creator Ed Piscor. Look, I have a lot of complex thoughts on this whole situation, as many of you do. Um, there's a lot to get through and a lot to sort through. I specifically didn't talk about this a whole lot on our channel. Uh, I didn't make any crazy videos about it. Because when you don't have the full picture and you don't have all the information, I don't believe that you should comment on things that you don't know about. And that is a huge problem in our society right now. I think people always think they have a voice and think they that their voice and opinion matters the most. And that can be detrimental in a situation like this that happened earlier this week. Heartbreaking. Um, I gotta be honest with you, when I first heard this news, Earlier in the week of Ed Piscor's passing, I had to I had to really rethink what it is that I'm doing on here. And, you know, to be quite honest, I, I contemplated like, do I even want to do this? Because I am quite tired and sick of social media. And I hate to say that it is a platform that can be useful and can help connect people. But it can also be horrible and it can bring out the worst of humanity. And we are not about that here. We are about being our best version of ourselves. So, man, rest in peace, Ed Piscor. Uh, just lots of love showered to his family um, going through what they're going through right now. Let's take a 10-second moment of silence for Ed. All right, I had to do that. Before we get started, let's do this top three, beginning with three. the one hand issue number three, Image Comics. We've got Rom V on writing. We've got Lawrence Campbell on art, Lee Lowridge on colors, and Aditya Bidikar on letters. Any other week, this could have been the pick of the week. We are eating well with this back and forth detective killer story with Ram V's one hand and Dan Waters on the six fingers. Loving the release schedule on this also really lends to a cohesive story being told that we get tidbits every release and we're getting to digest this very quickly and and i love that uh, but the plot definitely thickened with this issue detective nasser is a man desperate for answers and why shouldn't he be he's in prison two different killers with the same mo and now it's happening again which leads him to an unauthorized trip to the prison where odell watts the presumed previous one hand killer is serving his sentence but this visit only leads to some startling clues for the detective, but also could be the end of his career as a detective. And maybe that's what he needs, possibly, right? He was about to retire, um, so maybe this will just send him on his way out, or maybe not. Maybe he will just continue to do this on his own. How far will Detective Nazar go to solve these new murders, and where will his own private investigation lead him? This issue really really turn the heat up on the series. Small answers to underlying questions being subtly answered through each issue while presenting new questions like any good crime detective story should do. I am all about this book. This is one of my favorites on the shelves right now. And this is getting four jabronis. Freaking amazing. I recommend. Which takes us to two. Rook Exodus, issue number one. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous book. This is Image from the Ghost Machine imprint. Jeff Johns on writing, Jason Fabok on art, Brad Anderson on colors, and Rob Lay on letters. I really thought this was the pick of the week when I read it. It's pick of the week worthy, separated by a smidgen for being pick of the week. And also a shout out to this book, $3.99 for an issue number one, cardstock cover, 
extra size, 48 pages of world building, character development, action, flashbacks, and Jason Fabok art that is glorious and breathtaking. A farmer on a dying planet Earth is given a second chance of living a fulfilled life by getting a ride to the new terraformed world on the planet Exodus. The farmer, now known as Rook, was given the responsibility on this new world of being a warden, one who wears a helmet of commanding an animal species, and his species is birds. Like all good things that humans put their touch on, the engine that controlled this new world has failed, and immediately those who could afford left the planet Exodus, leaving the planet desolate, leaving only the struggling to survive this failed experiment. The power of the Wardens has also now fallen into the wrong hands, making this world more dangerous than ever. Rook wants nothing more than to get himself off of this planet, even if it means returning home to what was a dying planet Earth. I can't even begin to tell you how good this first issue is. This whole Ghost Machine imprint has an objective of creating great characters, and nothing screams great characters more than this comic. I'm, t I'm telling you, this is so beautiful. I'm going to show you one page, just so you can see these animals that the Wardens control. Look at, look how, look at this Jason Fabok art. This is absolutely ridiculous. I absolutely love the art in this. As a matter of fact, this issue at the number two spot this week is getting five jabronis. This is LNC certified. This is a must read comic book of all of the Ghost Machine books that came out this week, which I'm gonna tell you more in just a minute. This is the one I believe you must, must read. Freaking amazing, freaking amazing. LNC certified must read. I hope that you are enjoying the pick so far. Here's your thumbs up reminder. I really appreciate you tapping that. Shout out to Tiger Tales 2 who recommended we make this into a top 10 video. I actually really like that idea. We kind of tend to end up talking about 10 books out of my stack that I read every week. I was thinking maybe a top five. I'm pondering. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And we will definitely be having our live show next week, Tuesday, April the 9th. Come hang out with the pouch and I. It's going to be a blast. Look, if Rook Exodus was number two, that means that it's time for the... It's the pick of the week. The pick of the week. Pick of the week. And this week's pick of the week is Traveling to Mars, baby, issue number 11. We've got, uh, from a Blaze Comics, we've got Mark Russell on writing, Robert Dakar Melli on art, Chiara Di Francia on colors, and we've got Mattia Gentili on letters. Man, oh man, what haven't I said about this series? If you have been watching this video, if you've been tuning into this channel for some time, I have said a lot of things about this book through 11 issues. If you caught my top 25 comics of 2023, you would have known that Traveling to Mars was my number one book of 2023. It was also a Lost in Comics 2023 Comic of the Year nominee, also nominated for an Eisner for Best New Series. All that said, and yet I find so many people haven't read this book. Now, issue number 11, this issue was the conclusion to one of the most heartfelt, raw, human books that I have ever read. And that is a big, bold statement for a big, bold book that needs to be read. Uh, the journey from issue number one to issue number 11. Finding out that Roy, our main character, has a terminal disease. Roy being offered an opportunity to be the first human to claim Mars on a suicide mission and to claim Mars for an American beef corporation. The journey in an isolated ship to Mars, being alone with his thoughts and his memories, finding the purpose of life on this suicide mission to Mars. If you're like me, and you are constantly on the hunt for stories that invoke the feelings of what makes us human at our core, I cannot tell you enough, this is a must book for you to read. If you missed it in singles, please pick up the trade when it comes out. And after you do, after you're done reading it, 
After you have sideswiped the tear that is gently streaming down your cheek, please tag me on social media and let me know your experience with this book. I feel very strongly about this comic. I am going to reread it again. Be on the lookout because we are going to have a conversation with Mark Russell on one of our friends' comic YouTube channels. We'll be announcing that very soon. We're going to do a roundtable discussion with the writer Mark Russell and just pour out our love for this comic. This was such an epic journey. I cannot recommend it enough. I will be recommending this for years to come. Rook Exodus received a perfect score this week at the number two position. It was the beginning of a series. Traveling to Mars, issue number 11, the ending of a series, and it is also getting the five jabroni score. Lost in Comics certified. Absolute must read, and I'm telling you that 11 issues in. I don't know how else to tell you. Enjoy. Now let's get to some runner-ups this week, beginning with Another Ghost Machine book, Geiger issue number one, uh, Image Ghost Machine, The Unnamed Universe, uh, Jeff Johns on writing, Gary Frank on art, Brad Anderson on colors, and Rob Lay on letters. Geiger has been around since before the Ghost Machine imprint became a thing. We know this character. A very solid series has already been made for this character. So I wondered, what else does this story have to tell that we haven't already heard? Well, apparently a lot, and this issue really told my doubts to just shut the heck up. Uh, this is the new ongoing Geiger series, and this is the series where we see Geiger reluctantly turn into that hero that we've known that he is. We all know his backstory, you know, endowed with powers from a radiation blast, lost his family, lost his wife, while attempting to save them in a locked away bunker. But aside from a powerful backstory, what else can this character do? What else does this character have to offer in the way of a story? You will find out in this issue, and I'm telling you, this is freaking amazing. I recommend you jump on another Ghost Machine book. This is getting four jabronis. Next up, Guess what? Another Image Ghost Machine book, Red Coat issue number one, also part of the Unnamed Universe. Loving these wraparound covers, by the way. If you haven't uh, seen that, this is Red Coat and also Rook had the wraparound cover. Beautiful, beautiful. All cardstock and all $3.99. This is the way you do it. Uh, Jeff Johns again on writing, Brian Hitch and Andrew Curry on art, Brad Anderson on colors, and Rob Lay once again on letters. Very, very huge week for Jeff Johns. Brad Anderson, and Rob Lay. This week is all about Ghost Machine, and guess what? It is another very good issue, and this one is taking us back to the very beginning of the unnamed timeline. Now, if you read these books, if you're getting into the unnamed universe, at the very end of the book, it gives you this nice timeline here, and you'll see the very first part of the timeline is this book, this series. So if you are doing the journey, I would recommend you get into this. Um, this story takes place around the founding of a America, while one of the founders was attempting to imbue the powers of magic through a ritualistic sacrifice, a guy by the name of Simon Pure, a bit of a loser for his time, interrupted the ritual and became the immortal Red Coat. So many things to be impressed with in these comics, but each one has stellar art, each by the same writer, Jeff Johns, yet each book carries different tones. Uh, Red Coat definitely has a tinge of humor embedded within this lead character, which also leads to a very entertaining story. I am all in on this Ghost Machine imprint and the unnamed line. So well done. This one is getting Four jabronis, freaking amazing. I recommend you jump on this book ASAP. Now, a couple of uh, shout outs to get to this week. The Sacrificers, issue number seven, Image Comics, Rick Remender on writing, and Max Fiumara on art. Welcome back to the series, which was on a short hiatus, which went by very quickly. Um, the standout in this series through the first six issues, through this issue, is going to be the art. After I'm done reading this book, I can flip through this comic and know exactly what the story is trying to convey by the art. The emotion it conveys through each act, it is perfect. Um, this issue really deepened the characterization of Saluna and her goddess mother Luna. 
while broadening the world of the sacrificers and the effects that Luna's actions are having on this world. I love this series and very, very happy that it is back. I'm also giving it four jabronis. Freaking amazing. I recommend it. And my last shout out this week. A DC book slipped in here. Batman issue number 145. DC Comics. Chip Zdarsky on writing. Beautiful, gorgeous, incredible art by Jorge Jimenez. Look, I haven't mentioned this series in a while because to be quite frank, I don't think it's been worth mentioning in a while. However, Every now and then we get a glimpse of the bigger picture that Chip Zdarsky is trying to tell, this this bigger, broader story. This was one of those issues. Maybe the Joker year one stuff wasn't a waste. I wouldn't go that far just yet, maybe, but there are some good elements in this book. You know, for instance, Bruce now having to go off grid solo, it is going to be up to him to stop failsafe. He is not going to be able to connect with his friends. He's not going to be able to use technology and he's going to have to dig deep within himself. I like that. I like this issue and I hope we just keep building on this and get a resolution to this whole failsafe saga. Uh, please, no more of these short arcs that lead us away from the main event. Let's get this thing done. Let's get it wrapped up so we can go on to the next thing. Thing. Uh, this issue of Batman is getting three jabronis pretty darn good. Now it's time for the the palette cleanser pick of the week. And we're giving the palette cleanser this week to a little book called Crash Down. This is issue number three from What Not Publishing under the massive imprint comic Tom Garcia and Ryan Sargent on writing. Ben Templesmith, shouldering the art, the colors, and the letters. Look, this book is a palate cleanser for me because this book is different than anything else on shelves right now. Huge shout out to Tom, Ryan, and Ben on creating this new off-world experience, this new universe with these very sci-fi horror vibes that provide a perfect escape for our comic reading. What is this organism that is slowly consuming Alice? And you see it right there on the cover. Um, you see it in the book. What are the things on her neck, right? That she's, they look like, uh, I don't want to spoil anything for y'all, but they look like maybe she's trying to breathe through her neck to, uh, through her neck and what effect will all of those things have on not just Allison but all the others that are set to land on Imperion obviously something does not want them on this planet right we're starting to see that right uh, the art in this comic has such a tonal quality to the overall story and it gives me those lost vibes I appreciate that Ben Templesmith provides this close-up perspective of each scene that keeps an atmosphere of mystery as we read through this. If you're looking at this, you don't really get a whole lot of wide shots. You get a lot of this, a lot of very close up panels, again, which leads to this very mysterious vibe so that when a page like the last page happens, which I'm not gonna show you because that would be a spoiler, um, it really is effective. So great job all around from this creative team. I'm all in on this series. Hats off to the creative team, feeding us just enough through each issue that we must come back for more. I am giving it four jabronis. It's freaking awesome. I do recommend this one for y'all. Quality over quantity this week. That was the theme. Every book I mentioned today is so good. What are your thoughts on the new Ghost Machine books? Please tell me that you were reading Traveling to Mars, and if not, please let me know if you are picking up the trade. I told you earlier, but I want to know after you read it what your thoughts are. I will always speak so highly of that comic. What else did you dig this week? Let me know in the comments below. I thank you for watching, and as always... Stay lost in comics, my friends. I will see you soon.